Uh, so I'm going to roughly go through these topics, the problem, the history of, of uh, web applications, trends, existing efforts to, to assist with uh, packaging web applications, continuing problems in spite of uh, all of these fine efforts, and then I want to have quite a lot of time for discussion, so I don't want to stand up here for too long uh, actually talking. I, I want to try and get some of you guys to have some good ideas as well, because there isn't enough. So the problem, I guess, is many modern web applications are built using, many modern applications are built using web technologies. This is a problem because web technologies don't define any standards whatsoever. They're written in a wide range of languages. The standards are, they don't run on your computer, I guess, and they use HTML, <laughs> HTTP to communicate, mostly. <laughs> um, so, yeah, approximately no useful standards, give or take. The history, uh, in, in the beginning, you know, we, we wrote our applications with switches <laughs> and then we moved up to having serial terminals and serial terminals worked quite well in a lot of ways because when you wrote your computer on a serial terminal, the computer, you only had one computer to deal with, everything happened there. The terminal had a defined structured interface for interacting with it. and. Uh, we kind of got used to that, that computers got bigger and we needed them to do more uh, and it wasn't that pretty. So people came up with uh, client-server architectures where we hived off all the display processing to the, to the client end and the server was left doing the grunt work and that was kind of prettier for the people using them and extremely, extremely uglier for the people writing them because we ended up with so many standards for communication uh, and, and layout in those applications and we still had a, a very tight coupling between the, uh, the client side in many cases and the uh, operating system or the libraries on that operating system. So in due course Web 1.x came along and, uh, and we started to see web applications. In fact, uh, the web was around for quite a while before we started to really see web applications, but eventually they came and, uh, and they worked quite well. But they, don't, they still didn't have the same uh, interactiveness and power of, uh, of the client-server approaches, so people came up with web 2.x, as it's called these days, um, which obviously gives you a lot more, a lot more power, a lot more uh, prettiness, shiny, but it's a lot harder to package. And um, so, the, this is sort of the trends that I see at the moment in terms of web applications. The web 2.x is definitely here. There are an increasing number of applications that are that are arriving. Um, for the sort of uh, the sort of method of, of providing an interface to users to do stuff, they're not going away. They depend a large measure on JavaScript libraries, and those JavaScript libraries seem to be seeing some sort of voting with your feet trends to to choosing particular ones. So some are surviving, and, and some are, are going away. So there's there's some there's some standards emerging, I guess, but but they're still, they're still not clear, certainly not clear to me. Um, these are the existing efforts within Debian to try and define how to package things. So uh, how many of you use dbconfig common? Right. That's a few, it's not, not too bad. And it seems to be a pretty good standard, would you? Is it difficult to use? Do you find it difficult to use? No. No? Okay, good. Yeah, I, th I think that's, the, that's probably the, the best thing that we have at the moment in Debian. And uh, um, it would be nice if we could move it upstream as well, but <laughs> I can't see that happening. There's 
just it's just too too broad. The web applications policy. How many people have read that one? <laughs> Neil, who wrote it, at least partly. <laughs> Um, which is a fine effort that was started, what, 2005? Yeah, um, and is still draft, and was last worked on in... 2005? Well, 2006, according to the document itself, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, it, it really needs more people to understand its existence, and I think it needs a, a big push to, um, to get it approved as some sort of standard policy and move it out of that draft status. Because it, it's a good document, it says very good things, it, it, it explains what you should do with web applications, where all your files should go and pretty much why. Um, so I mean I'm standing up here today largely to publicise the existence of that. Something that's emerged recently as well is improvements in JavaScript packaging. Anybody here maintain any JavaScript packages? or? depend on any JavaScript packages with their stuff? Yeah. So how do you find that? The, the ja existing JavaScript packages work OK? Mm. The, the, because a lot of problems that I see with upstream in particular is that they include chunks of libraries from everywhere, you know, bits of code that you've got to carve out with an axe. <laughs> And JavaScript is one of those things that's even more complicated because it, it again, you're back in this client-server thing where the JavaScript runs on God knows, you know, and, and the other code runs here and they have to mesh. So if your application depends on a particular version of a particular JavaScript, you, you really need to have version library dependencies and things like that again. Okay. Well, I, I'm not sure that they're happening, but what seems to be happening more is that it just gets included directly in the in the package in the one place. So, yeah. Um, and uh, so, continuing problems that I see uh, are this lack of publicity regarding web applications policy, um, the need for for setting that as a standard that it's not official, uh, and and FHS compliance, which is part of that. Um, applications putting their files in slash opt or, or user local or whatever. It's just, you know, it doesn't happen with official Debian packages, I guess, but uh, certainly Upstream wants to do it a lot. Um, so, yeah. I guess that's kind of all I really have to say, and I'd just like to go on to discussion. Or I did want to go on to discussion. Um, and to help that, I'll take a leaf out of um, Don's book and uh, set up a, a gobby session there. So if you want to join the gobby session. Do I need a bigger font for the... Yeah, okay. Let's see if I can... Huh? Mouse point is not big enough. <laughs> How's that? <coughs> How's anybody on IOC saying that's all right? Okay. So Does anybody want to, Manoj, thank you. Do you want to get a microphone? I might have missed it, but I haven't seen any uh, requests about making the web app policy or the JavaScript packaging. Uh, show up on the policy mailing list. So if it you have put it up there and I missed it, I'm, I apologize. I wasn't responsible for the web application policy. Um, it's Neil there 
who's hiding at the moment, um, and I don't believe that there has been any official request for it. I think that it got to a point where the, the authors saw some deficiency in, in what they had, and they were seeking perfection, as you know, so many of us have a tendency to do. That uh, would be a welcome change on the policy mailing list. <laughs> 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 Maybe that's why they didn't feel they fitted in there. <laughs> one, of, one of the things that I'm trying to improve in the policy process is uh, helping people create draft policy uh, for future inclusion in technical policy, even if the current form isn't good enough. And uh, to in include in technical policy some idea of uh, time changes, like the TDEB stuff is currently not something that we want, but learning plus two, it will be mandatory. It would be nice if we could introduce it in earlier versions of policy so that people have, uh, it gets wider visibility and people have some idea what's coming up. Mm. So if we can cooperate on getting this in, it might help my newfangled change policy update mechanism talk. We can use the web app policy as a guinea pig to get new ideas into the Debian technical policy as well. Yeah, so I, I think that's good, and and I guess that's that's the first major point is that is that we should submit what we've got to the policy mailing list. Um, if somebody wants to note that, Any, anybody else have something they want to add? I see somebody talking about JavaScript Common there. Neil, you want to? There's a microphone here. Yep. Uh, great, thanks. Um, well, one of the main, we did consider adding uh, the web apps policy manual, uh, not only as a draft, but trying to get it integrated with full policy. One of the main blockers we saw for that um, was the use of the helper, um, similar to um, dbconfig common. Um, I believe it was um, Sean Finney was working on um, uh, a web app common. Uh, framework, so you could use this to install the different web apps in, in different uh, with different web servers and with different hosting environments. So, so you could uh, create v um, virtual servers quite easily. So you could have use one config, uh, sorry, one install in different <coughs> configs for for each of your different virtual hosts and things. Um, I believe that was quite a bit of work being done on that, but that sort of stalled. Uh, we were sort of waiting for that to come. Uh, yeah. to the forefront before trying to push with the policy because uh, we, we realize that something is, is needed to help um, register all these web apps with the web servers in a standard way. I, I think that's good, but uh, perhaps policy should lead the development, you know, that the, the policy should settle before we write the utilities around, um, around implementing it in an automated manner. Uh, you know, really, my you know joke about DH make web app is is because it's impossible without having a policy. You, you, the uh, and the web app's common is great and a noble effort, but uh, it hasn't made it into Lenny. Um, and yeah, it, it really we need to get it out there. Be down. Yes, Andrea, I was going to point out that, that this isn't the first time we've had a suggestion that, you know, it might be a good idea for policy to lead implementation, but that, that really is sort of a complete break from tradition in the project in the sense that, uh, to some extent, uh, policy has, has always sort of been a, a trailing process that, you know, the, the expectation was that, that people really would sort of prototype things, uh, implement them, the, the better mousetrap would uh, attract more mice and mm. we would eventually sort of have, you know, in effect, a self-emergent, uh, this is the best practice for doing this, therefore that's what we ought to codify kind of thing. So while I completely understand the sentiment that says it sort of seems weird to go, you know, write a bunch of utilities and code a bunch of automation until we have some agreement on how that should work. I think we have to be a little careful about describing that as, as policy in the sort of Debian policy document 
context of the word policy because that, that would be, it, it would be sort of backwards from the way we've traditionally expected things to emerge and evolve. Right. I've seen policy, from what I can see, describes where files should go and, and so on and not necessarily how they should get there. Um, Manoj? Traditionally, we have always wanted a reference implementation before you codify things in policy. Uh, unfortunately, while I still think that is a good idea, unfortunately, it has led to several efforts stalling because it is a chicken and egg issue. Sometimes we need some direction to be decided on before you put in more effort in doing a reference implementation. and. Uh, this is one of the things that I want to address in the policy update mechanisms going forward. Uh, we need to create something which is in between, you know, the wild, woolly, no direction, and the written stone technical policy, you violate that and you get a RC bug on you yes. uh, situation. Yes. So this is something that I'll be talking about on uh, Friday, I believe, which is Oh my goodness, it's tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> so I would appreciate it if you could come to the talk and we could maybe hammer out some of the details about how, what needs to go into that updated process. In order to do things like this, we need some direction and yet we need to decouple the development from actual releases. You know, don't follow this and your package gets thrown out is a bit, it's too early in, the, it seems, in the, uh, web app policy development to go for that kind of strictness. And yet we need some place for people to come together. See, what you say, Bidale, about accepting the um, best practices that we see out there, there definitely are best practices in packaging web applications, I think, and uh, the JavaScript common uh, package, for example, is, is you know one of those. And there are use of DB config common and so on, uh, th those are best practices that are, that are there. Um, there's plenty of stuff that we can look at and say, well, it's best practice and let's document it. And, and the, the web apps policy document, the draft that's out there, seems to me to document best practice pretty darn well, really. Um, it, it just needs to be ratified in some way to be made more official. As this, yeah, you got the mic. Great, you got the mic now. Um, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I think Manoj has a, a good take on this, which is that there is great value in having some mechanism for us to come to some convergence of opinion, agreement, and to drive sort of forward in a consistent way. Um, I, I just, it, it's that sort of final step of putting the seal of approval on it, saying, yes, this is the policy and this is the way it will be done, that I want to make sure we don't leap to too quickly, you know, versus, you know, trying to, you know, have a way of, of getting people to converge and, and move towards that ultimate objective. Hmm. But if the document's been around for three years now uh, and, and only not submitted, no, but it, even without that submission, nobody's seen any good reason for changing it in the last two years. And maybe that's just because they got bored and stopped looking, but it's, I, I think if we submit what's there to the policy mailing list, that then we'll get feedback there and, and can modify it for, for some things that have changed in the environment in the last couple of years. And uh, it, it should, yeah, should be good. Is this on? Yeah. In some ways, you guys are the domain experts. So the policy mailing list will tend to defer to you because you guys are the ones who are actually implementing the web apps. And if you have come across something that is a best practice, it's likely to be accepted. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as there is cognizance of the fact that despite what the Pythonistas say, there is more than one way to do it. So as long as we leave room for uh, diversity in the ecosystem, 
I don't think there will be a problem, mm. uh, you know, fast tracking it into the. Uh, we probably can't get it into the Lenny policy. No, this. but I don't Lenny think we want one, to. Yeah, so Lenny plus one shouldn't be an issue. Mm. So, uh, who would be interested in helping out to to get this? And maybe I can put their name up in there. Um, um, I'll sort of take some responsibility for uh, for for pushing it through. But uh, if anybody else wants to help out and. In reviewing the current policy, um, let's move forward. Yes, thanks, Neil. You can put your name in there, <laughs> especially as you're already down as one of the authors. <laughs> okay. Is there anything else anybody wants to talk about about web applications? Otherwise, this is a very short talk. Yeah, Tim. Yes. Wait for both. <laughs> yeah, I uh, won't do this in stereo. <laughs> so, um, so was, um, you made you made the joke about um, DH make web app, um, and I was thinking about this. And actually, a lot of these web apps are going to be based on some framework. So, for instance, a lot of them will be Django apps and have a very consistent structure. Um, is it a possibility that um, once we've got all this policy in place, we could put together, uh, say, DH make Django, and um, it will automatically package up your Django application for you, or something like that? Or um, in Perl, there's a Catalyst framework and Ruby Gems, yeah, so on and so forth. Um, We're going to hear about Ruby Gems this afternoon, I believe. So. <laughs> Goodness, um, and. Um, Yes, and I don't know if that could that could sort of be wrapped into some sort of uh, web app thing. Maybe that would be a bit, bit silly, but um, but we could get sort of some sort of way to that goal, at least for for apps which have a consistent, uh, which are based on a framework. Yeah, yeah, I think there's hope for that. Okay, I guess it's not very contentious, <laughs> thanks.